I was just going to say, I wanted to do a quick uh, breakdown of East West for our audience and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong at any point, but East West is one of the classic LA studios. It was Western, right? So it starts, um, 1965, Bill Putnam, uh, who everybody knows from Universal Audio. Yeah. Uh, if you're a nerd, like the rest of us are, Bill Putnam was in <laughs> Chicago and Frank Sinatra wanted to record out in LA. LA was just starting to pop then, you know, as like yeah. the, the home of the celebrities and all that. So, um, so uh, Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby moved out to L.A. and they wanted to have a studio out there. So they hit up Bill and said, hey, man, come out to L.A. and, and we'll we'll help fund you to build a studio out here. And um, Bill came out and he found this old uh, this old grocery store that had also been a radio hall and it also been a uh, a uh, brothel at one at one point in time. And they um, <laughs> they found this. This old old radio hall, and, they, and he came in and he he gutted the entire building and um and its sister beside, which was United. He gutted the buildings as much as he needed to to make them what he wanted, uh, and he converted it into some studios, and that became United and Western was the complex. And they used to East West is still famous for its its echo chambers, and they Bill had built these echo chambers upstairs, and United and and Western had telephone r- lines running between them so that you could be all the way over in United and use the echo chamber in, in Western and all that stuff. That's you know, awesome. and it was like, yeah, he's really brilliant. He did a lot of really crazy stuff, but, uh, looking at the building, it's very crazy because what he built in 1965 is exactly what is still there today. As far as the, the, the rooms themselves, you know? Yeah. Uh, but eventually Alan sides who came up under Bill Putnam, uh, the story is that. Yeah, Alan Sides came up under Bill Putnam. And also, here, so Alan's still out there, so he can correct me if I'm wrong about this. But I heard that Bill Putnam took a vacation for the first time in his life, and Alan Sides bought everything out from underneath him. And when he came back, he was basically like pushed into retirement by Alan buying everything out from underneath him. So um, <laughs> that sounds very Alan Sides to me. That definitely sounds very Alan Sides. I could it be does, wrong, but it does. He turned the buildings into Ocean Way, and it was Ocean Way, uh, the complex, both buildings were Ocean Way for a little while. And then eventually he sold uh, East West to Rick Adams, who was a billionaire internet investor guy. And he bought the building and turned it into Cello, and it was Cello for a while. And that's and Candace ran it when it was Cello. Mm, okay. And then eventually somebody, I might be confusing two stories. So I, I love when people afterwards will be like, you're an idiot. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're making things up. But the story that I understand it to be is that, um, one day somebody hit a fire hydrant out front of the building and the water came down through the, the, the roof and, and it leaked and caused a big, you know, uh, water issue in the building. And, the, they weren't really making any money at the time. It was like the beginning of like the internet uh, Pro Tools world and everything. They were starting to lose money. And so the billionaire Rick Adams who owned it was like walked away and Gotta just go. declared, yeah, declared bankruptcy for the, the building. And, and everybody, you know, John Bryan was there. There's a story about John Bryan and Don Waz and, um, and, uh, Candace and a whole bunch of people like just hanging out in Studio One at the last day because they basically were like, hey, come and get your shit right now. Everybody's got to get out. The building's over. And um, and they all sat in Studio One and like cried and drank and, you know, like what you do when you lose a place. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Cried and drank and 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 made songs for the last time. And that was the end of of East West or so we thought, you know, and um then it, uh, it went into bankruptcy and it just sat there empty for a few years. Well, not empty. All the consoles were still there. All the microphones were still there. That's wild. You could have just walked into East West and walked out with an with an eighty twenty eight if you needed one. You could have just gone in and grabbed an eighty twenty eight, just loaded it up and taken it out, maybe module by module. But you know, but um, it sat empty for a few years, and then um, Doug Rogers who. Uh, who built um, the uh, East West string libraries with um, Nick Phoenix, who does the, the quantum lab stuff. Uh, they built, they, you know, they were doing really su- su- successful stuff. And the story of Doug Rogers is actually amazing because how it's been related to me again, correct me if I'm wrong, Doug. Uh, <laughs> and I, all, but nothing but love to Doug because he saved a, a historic landmark and, and I love him. He's always around. He's still, you know, in the studio or whatever, but um he he basically had 
the first commercial CD burner in, in like LA. And that's how the string libraries or all that stuff started was they were doing like uh, sample libraries of drums. They got Bob Clearmountain to record drums. And the okay. real success story came whenever they put those on CDs because he was the first person with a commercial CD burner or access to a commercial CD burner or whatever. Oh, shit. And he could reproduce thousands of these CDs in no time. So he was just sending out CDs with these really good Bob Clear Mountain drum samples on them and made a bazillion dollars off of it. And so he bought East West as, you know, as a bankrupt building, hired Philippe Stark for some crazy $15 million sum to come in and redecorate the entire thing. And to his credit, he didn't let anybody touch the studios. You yeah. can do anything in the whole building. They gutted a whole the whole place because it used to look like the way United looks now, where it's like the wood walls and the classic old school studio bullshit. Right. And then Philippe Stark came and decorated it in, in the style of early fuck, you know, and then now it is what it is, you know, and, and it's just glorious. Uh, and, and again... That's what attracted me to East West in the first place was the guitar desk pictures. And, the you know, it's like I never went there, but I, I saw on the Internet these got they got pictures of um, of guitars and they got uh, of desks carved into guitars and all this stuff and uh, or guitars carved into desks. Sorry, I got a message on my thing and I got distracted because I'm like a I got like ADD, like a <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? What's that? What's that? What's that? I fucking lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, uh, so you know, I saw this crazy studio that was decorated all insane, and I was just like, wow, I, I really want to see what this is all about. And then, and then, so that's how it, it got my interest to come there in the first place. Uh, so it, and it still it does that for other people too. Like that's why you know you get these really high profile artists remembering and seeing this stuff and coming in and being like, oh yeah, man, like I heard of, I've seen this video, I've seen this in so-and-so's music video or I, cause they do a lot of music videos. They do all sorts of stuff there. It's a studio that like doesn't say no to a gig. They filmed American Idol there. They filmed the voice there. They filmed, I mean, I've been on a dozen reality TV shows that were filmed there, you know? 